ABC Montana Sports with Dominic Sheldon. Hey everyone, welcome to Bozeman. I'm outside Bobcat Stadium. And of course, earlier today, the big news in Bozeman, the hiring of a new head football coach. Just announced a couple minutes ago, he did retain four assistants off the previous Bobcat staff. We'll tell you more about that later tonight. Yeah, Sean, survive and advance the theme here in Reno today. Montana comes out with a dominating performance over Sacramento State in their quarterfinal matchup, their first one of the tournament. And the story in this one really, what could have been a three point defeat. They did have the lead with one minute to go. The last time they were this close, in fact, was in 2002. They knocked off a ranked Stanford team. It's chilly here. It's also chilly across town. Rob Jesselson, Sean Rainey, two of the hardest working sports guys in the state this week. You already saw them with their preview of the Brawl of the Wild. Here in Fargo, North Dakota, Don McShown alongside Sean Rainey. And Sean, we're here, of course, talking University of Montana football. But it turns out maybe the biggest story today is coming from Montana State as they've announced their head coach, Jeff Choate, will be replacing Rob Ash as the head man over in Bozeman. Hey, football fans, I'm Dominic Sheldon here once again to bring you this week's Tyorama Cat Grizz update. We start off with the Montana State Bobcats. Heading into their game with NAU this weekend, the Cats sit at 2-1 and one and just ahead of the Grizzlies in the FCS National Coaches Poll. Next up, they face Sacramento State, a team that gave the Bobcats a tremendous game on the road last season. MSU winning a tight one, 59 to 56. Of course, you can watch that Grizzly Idaho State game on your local SWX affiliate. That does it for this week's Tyrama Kakras update. We'll see you next time. Go, 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 go! New this year to Little League in Missoula, the Challenger Division. And the level of excitement on the team, well, that's probably best described by my buddy Riley. Really excited. The Challenger division features both boys and girls ages 5 to 18 who have either a physical or mental disability. For Coach Kevin Miltko, who has coached football and competitive softball for years, his coaching views don't change much with his new team. Probably the most important thing is to always have fun and to play with joy. And I think that that's at any level of competition. If you do that, you're going to be successful. And that's what we tried to do out here in the Challenger division. As many are playing on their first softball or baseball teams ever, their first practices have been focused on the basics. We're working on batting and throwing and catching, and I enjoy doing batting. And the players already have an impressive outlook on playing the game. It takes a lot more than courage to play baseball. It, it takes heart and skill to just swing and I encourage all of the other players to, to do the same. The Challenger team has not played any games yet and are just a couple practices in, but the excitement level is easy to see. I mean, you see a lot of smiles during practice and a lot of running around. I've heard some laughs too, so it's good. The community has come out in a big way to support the team, with sponsors donating enough money to make it free for all the players, everyone from the Missoula Osprey ownership to local high schoolers and even Grizz softball team members were out to help the kids. This community is just, it's so supportive and it's just, it shows how amazing the support is no matter who they're trying to help out and they just want to give everyone an equal opportunity to have some fun. The spirit of the game is best illustrated by the attitude of players in the Challenger division. It's okay for a hitter to, to miss every couple of times. You, you just got, got to try harder and persevere. That's what I do. And it's not just the players who come away from practice feeling excited with a sense of pride. Those who coach the kids get that same feeling. I guess the best way to sum it up is one of the moms came back to me and said, you know, my little boy has been watching other kids play for, for years now, and he's, he's always wanted to be able to play on a team, and uh, it's been his dream. Um, thank you for making my little boy's dream come true to actually get to play on a team. When I came back, I called my board and I said, I guess we did the right thing because we made one little boy's dream come true, and that's what it's all about. Hello and welcome inside Dahlberg Arena for another edition of the Brawl of the Wild. College men's basketball inside the Adams Center. I'm Dominic Sheldon, joined by Sean Rainey. And Sean, you got the number one team in the Big Sky Conference, Montana Grizzlies, going up against their rival Montana State. The Bobcats fighting for a top four position. 
but without a doubt, one of, if not the best MSU men's teams we've seen in a long, long time. They've got arguably the best player in the conference in the post with Martin Broenig, but you pull it out on the outside, and a guy that tore apart the Bobcats last time, a junior college transfer in Walter Wright. Yeah, we all... The Adams Center is packed for the Brawl of the Wild, the 293rd matchup between Montana and Montana State. Here's a look at your Bobcat starters. Zach Green, Marcus Colbert, Tyler Hall, Quinton Everett, and Tyson Canseo. Of course, Shy Blake was starting a good chunk of the season leading into this game, but he's likely out for the rest of the season with injury. So we grew up in Post Falls, Idaho, just a few hours outside of Missoula, came to camps at the University of Montana growing up. A huge dunk from Zach Green, nicely fed from Colbert, and that's the kind of athlete Zach Green is. Hall now in transition over to Green, back to Gobella, glue at the top, and Matlock to finish it off. He does. What a sequence for Najee Matlock to get the block and then come back and hit the three-point shot. But at practice, you get a little bit of everything with Coach Secure. Yeah. He can be funny, he can be happy, he can be very intense. Very and intense. Very, very <laughs> intense. But you got to see Robin Selvig in the early game. So now we'll give you a look at what practice is like with head coach Travis Secure. Get it to Zach Green. Green goes one on one, knocks over Lopez. Lopez, one of the best in the conference and drawn charges. It wasn't a ton of contact, but boy, the Oscars around the corner and he might have deserved one for that. Take a look at it. These replays brought to you by Rimrock Flooring. You know, a tough one uh, from the referee's perspective. That's a lot of movement when a shoulder goes down. It's tough not to make that a charge call, but Lopez certainly made the best out of that situation. No numbers for Colbert, so he holds it up to Gobella Glue and gets it back. He launches from a foot or so beyond the arc. Nothing but net, and the Bobcats close the gap to four points. Isolated up top is Bruining against Newman. Newman can't stop him. He gets to the basket, and he gets the foul. Everett drives in on the freshman. Great move to get underneath him. Million-dollar move, but a nickel shot. Can't get it to drop. Tries to take off Ogine. Ogine gets it. Back on the other end, he's got Hall behind him, goes up for the layup, nicely done. And that breaks open the game, 80 to 69. Brian Fish wants to talk it over with his team. We'll take a break and be back and see if the Bobcats can weather the storm after this. So one of the things that's great about this particular Brawl of the Wild matchup is you've got two of the winningest coaches in program history. For Trisha Binford, she's been here 11 seasons, 169 career victories, best for Montana State. 32-22, Lady Grizz leading the number one team in the conference. We'll be back with more on the Halftime Show up next. You see Coach Stockton and just outside of the huddle there, and one of the things that Coach Benford talked about, number one, there's never been a Montana State women's basketball assistant coach that's garnered as much national attention as Coach Stockton for good reason. But one of the things that he does, if you'll notice, when players are subbed out, he is the first person they talk to. So immediately when a player goes out, they go talk to Coach Stockton, and as the way Coach Benford put it, you can't ever second guess John Stockton. And I think that's probably safe to say when it comes to most things, particularly in basketball. Moving it around to Doran. Doran beats her defender out to Isaac, who had the open look, didn't do anything with it. Vining on the shot. Vining nails it. That puts him up by two with 12 seconds left. Montana State, no timeout. Stockton drives in, kicks it outside. Shot no good. Hamas with the rebound, the putback no good. Isaac there with the board out of bounds. The call looks like it's gonna go to Montana State. They'll take a timeout. The referees looking to see if they want to go over that. It appears they will. The teams will go to the benches. Wow, what a shot from Haley Vining. Well beyond the art, nothing but net. And she's a player that, as Coach Selva could tell you, she's the best three-point shooter in practice. She hasn't been able to put it together in the games just yet. But when you need a big play from a senior point guard, you can't get any better than that. What a day it was for the Montana Grizzlies in their season opener. Defending four-time national champion North Dakota State in town with a record crowd on hand. In tonight's show, we'll hear from Grizz head coach Bob Stitt, quarterback Brady Gustafson, and feature the linebackers and defensive coordinator Ty Gregorak. But first, let's get to the highlights. Back to the Grizzly Sports Report, now joined by head coach Bob Stitt. And coach, the first game under the belt, I know when we talked to you leading up to it, you said the only reason you get nervous is because you're unprepared. Well, it appears you guys were well prepared. You knock off the number one team in the nation. 
What are the emotions now? Not nervous, what are they? You know, we're very, very happy that we could go out and play that well early, and, and we didn't know what to expect, didn't know how we would match up with North Dakota State. And Walk me through the final possession you guys have, less than two minutes, you got to go 80 yards, you did it. How did that happen, especially with so many fourth downs that you guys had to power through? Uh, you know, I, you know, when we first started off, we got a couple easy completions, you know, kind of kind of getting a rhythm, and I, I mean, I really think that's important for any two-minute offense. Uh, and, you know, we're already used to going fast, so it's not like we're putting a different frame of mind on for that possession. And Finally, we'll end on a lighthearted note. We are shooting the show on Valentine's Day. So if I were to ask your wife if you were romantic, what do you think she would say and why? <laughs> the most romantic man in the world. Uh, no, she... Uh... I'm not the most romantic person in the world. Coach, uh, let's start with the environment. On the road, first road game of the year, they had a sellout crowd. They had skydivers coming in before the game, quite the spectacle. Uh, how does that environment play a role in the game? And, and if, even if it doesn't, what was the environment like? It was great. They, they do a nice job putting on a fantastic show. I know the last time we talked to you for the coach's show was after a heartbreaking overtime loss to Weber State a record-setting victory this time around. How much of a roller coaster of emotions has this season been already? Uh, I couldn't, couldn't have ever imagined uh, an emotional ro roller coaster like we went through. It was so high after the first week and then you got a downer. And uh, What has rivalry developed into for you? For me, it's just something to look forward to every year. I mean, since the first year I got here, I heard about the the rivalry and didn't really understand it that much and didn't really know how exciting it could be. And after my first year, it was just something I look forward to every year.